All right, everybody, J.C. Ice here, or Jamie Dundee, to tell you that you're fixing to listen to the greatest hour in wrestling because it's just another damn wrestling podcast. It's time for uh, another wrestling podcast. The measuring stick just changed around here, buddy. You're looking at it. The best there is, the best there was, and the best there ever will be. They got the answers. I change the question. The cream of the crop. Even pretty does it better. These are the best in the world, brother. These are the best in what they do. When we talk about the legends of the sport, there's only two in my book. Another wrestling podcast. All right, all right, all right. I'm Steve Credo, and Jonathan Benjamin is, he's MIA this week. He's in Parts Unknown, uh, but I think we'll be hearing from him later in the show with a a special interview. Uh, This week we have Jamie Dundee joining us on the show. You might remember his little stint in the Nation of Domination and uh, he's been all over the world, all over the place. We're going to talk to him today. Jonathan is on a special mission. He sent this interview in this week, so uh, it's going to be a treat. Stick around for that. But who am I going to talk to for the next uh, hour on this show? Uh, I had to dig deep. I had to go out there and find, you know, another fan, a fan that I know, a fan that I have grew up with, a guy that I know who knows more than wrestling than I know. And that's Anthony Cooter. Anthony's joining us today. Anthony, you out yes, there? Yes, sir. What's going on, Credo? Hey, man. Uh, welcome to another wrestling podcast. Uh, you know, this is the first guest guest spot we've actually had replacing one of us on the show. So uh, the honor goes to you, mister. Well, who better than me? I mean, really? Come on, Credo. <laughs> I mean, who else are you going to get here? Hey, man, we've, uh, we grew up with this. For you guys that don't, don't know... Uh, me and Mr. Cooter over here, we've, uh, you know, we've, he's been to my wedding, we've been friends, we've had fights, we've had fun <laughs> times, we've had a lot of stuff that we've done together, uh, you know, we went to high school together, we've done it all. All right, all right, well, let's get it going, Credo, what are we going to talk about this week? Well, man, you know, uh, since, since you're kind of the new kid on the block, if you will, uh, we have the week that was, uh, we're going to get right into the biggest headlines of the week. Backlash, man. Uh, Backlash came off Sunday. Uh, a lot of things happened on there. It, it was almost just an overglorified SmackDown, I think. Uh, it wasn't really, it didn't really hit me as a pay-per-view. It just, it had the same set as SmackDown, but a lot of things happened then. Uh, what was your thought on this? This was the first solo pay-per-view of uh, SmackDown Live uh, since the brand split. You know what? I rather enjoyed it, and that shocks the hell out of me because I'm usually the first person to complain about everything. And, uh, I mean, to open up with that woman's match, which was incredible, um, that SmackDown uh, women's division is stacked, and I think it really gives Raws a run for its money. I mean, just to open up with that, and Alexa Bliss just had her coming out party on that match. Just incredible. It was different. I feel like all the matches had more time than usual because of the yes. brand split. And it got it was done by 1030. And I was like, wait a minute. It's, you know, I'm, I'm used to, the, you know, the show's ending at 11, 1105, 1115 or whatever. But uh, it was done by 1030. And that was it. I mean, it, I don't know. It, it wasn't rushed. It was a well-paced uh, pay-per-view. And I think that's what's great about this brand split that will probably get equal pay-per-views equal time equal you know everything and i think it'll probably enhance the quality of the matches right well i was literally just going to say that the match quality itself just incredible i mean the match that really stood out to me for some strange reason and god is going to kick me in the head for saying this the miz and dolph ziggler i enjoyed the hell out of that match and i'm was shocked at the amount of time they got the near falls i mean A lot of people hate on The Miz. I have been a big Miz hater for years. But when you work with somebody like Dolph and someone like Miz who's put the time in to really hone his craft, you really can't complain. That was was just – I wanted to say phenomenal, but we'll get to AJ Styles (laughs) in a little bit, my man. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly uh, what it is, you know. Uh, it, these guys are getting more time to shine, you know, and it's, you know, they don't like, oh, sorry, guys, we're running out of time to show, so you only get, like, five minutes out there, you know? Like, these guys actually get to do uh, what they normally do, uh, you know, on, li- on live TV, so it's it's really good. This brand split's working, but uh, 
with this pay-per-view came new champions. Uh, we have a new SmackDown Women's Champion. We have new SmackDown Tag Team Champions. And we have a new WWE World Heavyweight Champion. Uh, from the bottom to the top, you know, what did you think about Heath and Rhino? Uh, is that a little bit of a surprise as the first ever SmackDown Live Champions? Yeah, have we gotten to the point where we love jobbers? I mean, we went from Damian Mizdow to now chanting and cheering for Heath Slater. <laughs> I mean, it's it. incredible. He's hilarious. He's finally gotten over. How many guys have we seen over the years who have tried and tried again to just get over? And Heath Slater has finally done it. I mean, Kofi Kingston is, is a prime example of that. Until he got the New Day, I mean, he's a fantastic talent, but I mean, come on, until he found his niche with, with that group, he really was nobody in my eyes. And now, I mean, Heath Slater has found something, and Rhino backing him up, I mean, how could you go wrong there? Yeah, it's going to be interesting, you know, because uh, Rhino's also running uh, for office, so he's uh, kind of campaigning. He's also now a WWE Tag Team Champion. Did uh, you see that video? My God! <laughs> It, it's it, so great, it, but you know it's really it's 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 crazy. So many things are happening. Like we're seeing so many old faces. Uh, who'd have thought that you'd have uh, you know Rhino made a surprise in NXT, made his way into SmackDown, and now is a tag team champion. Like it, it, it's it's unhurt. Like we haven't had this you know resurgence of old talent, jobbers uh, in, in a long time, and. It's amazing how long he's been away, and uh, now he's a tag team champion with Heath Slater. So I don't think they're going to be very long reigning SmackDown tag team champions, but uh, we'll yeah, see. Yeah, but you know what? Locker rooms need talent like that. I mean, it's just like any great sports team. You can have all the stars in the world, but until you get that veteran in there, there's going to show you some real leadership and you know, just people who you respect that you may have watched in, in years prior. I mean, it's just necessary, and it just makes the product better. I mean, it broke a lot of people's hearts that we, we didn't get to see Shelton Benjamin come back because yeah. I, for one, was just dying to see him in the ring again. He's one of my all-time favorites, and, I mean, that would have really added some flavor to that to that roster. But, you know, hopefully he comes back and, and, and we get more surprises like this because I really think it's good for the product. Yeah, and, you know, it's they definitely, you know, I was a little bit worried when they when they did the brand split because it was like, oh man, who someone's got to lose out of this. And I SmackDown's been winning. Uh, I feel like they got the A show almost. And I mean, don't get me wrong, I love Raw. I watch Raw live every week, but at the same time, I feel like they definitely balance these shows out well because I can't remember <laughs> a day to where I really wanted to watch SmackDown like you know months ago. And now it's like I can't miss it either, like Raw in a way to where. Uh, I don't want to read about it online. I want to watch it on TV because they've just definitely been having a, a different and better product, I think, in uh, in the recent weeks. But now there's a new SmackDown Women's Champion. Um, Becky Lynch, are you a fan? Did you like this? Or uh, what are your thoughts? She needed this. And, and let me tell you something. She's going to bring that whole women's division on that roster to a whole new level. I mean, look look at the quality of, of that match. Alexa Bliss, even Carmella, who I really did not have high hopes for, but it just Naomi, I've hated her for years, and now all of a sudden she's coming in. <laughs> and, and, and now maybe it's because she has uh, quality opponents to work with. Even Nikki Bella, who in the last couple of years, stepping her game up, just top to bottom, Everybody in that match, like I would have given a standing ovation. Becky needed this, but I, I have a feeling that it's it's going to be tough because a lot of people uh, in the in the women's division on SmackDown really stand out, not just to me, but to a lot of the fans. Oh, yeah. And that's the chatter from the internet. That's just just how it's been. After that, the biggest part of the night though happened when uh, AJ Styles beat Dean Ambrose, and I'm so happy. I'm so happy Dean Ambrose isn't the champion anymore. Uh, it was well past his 15 minutes of fame, and, you know, going into this, uh, I think all the marks out there, all the fans out there, everybody who knew who knew AJ Styles, even the people who barely or hated him a little bit, were happy that he won it. It's one of those things that doesn't happen too often. I didn't actually think they were going to put him over on Ambrose, at least not in a first match. I mean, I really thought that 
Ambrose was starting to come into his own. Um, he had some really good matches, and he just looked confident when he was in the ring. Uh, you know, prior to his title, when it was like he just looked lost, like almost like he didn't even want to be there. I mean, you could tell he loves what he does, yeah. but at the same time, just like I'm bored, give me something that I can do, give me something to work with. Um, had some had some good matches, and I'm I'm surprised. Uh, you know, they pulled the trigger on this so quick. I, don't get me wrong. I know down the line, I always thought AJ would get the belt. I just didn't think it would be so soon. I'm not complaining either. Mm -hmm. So all you keyboard clackers, don't be like, oh, Cooter, you're a hater. Yes, I'm a hater. We know this. But I'm an objective hater. That's the difference between me and a lot of them. But AJ, he, uh, you know, he's the only guy now who's had the TNA heavyweight title, the NWA title, the uh, <laughs> New Japan, I, how do you say it? IWGP, excuse yeah. me. And now the WWE title. I mean, who else in the world can say that? I mean, you just put yourself in Hall of Fame contention, in my opinion. And and since he's been here, I mean, there were talks that he was going to get squashed, that he was going to just, you know, be a mid-card guy. And he fought through all that by putting on consistently the best match of the night. And and that's what you do. I mean, when people doubt you, you show them, look, you're not holding me down. You give them the best. And this is what you get, bro. AJ yeah. Styles is no joke. But yeah, AJ Styles. I have I got one question for you though. Um yeah. him winning it cuz now since the Universal Championship, it's kind of basically in my mind it's pretty much split in a way the WWE Heavyweight uh, Championship even though they didn't say it is, but in a way there's now two top titles. So, you know, uh with AJ Styles winning it and now that there's a Universal Championship, did it have that much less of an impact because now there's like, oh, there's two championships and he just has the other one. Did God, it, did, do you no, know what I mean? To where no. did it lose that little, bit of, that little bit of a pop that we would have had if that was the only WWE championship, you know? No, because I, I mean, if, if you look at the WWE Universal title, it's, it's the equivalent of the World Heavyweight title when they did the first brand split. I mean, it's, it's the top title for that roster, for that brand. The, the end goal, and anybody who ever wants to be a pro wrestler, the creme de la creme is the WWE World Heavyweight title. So that's what it is. He is the king of the mountain, in my opinion. You right. just can't you, – you can't take away the prestige of the WWE title – over some top tier title that you made like two weeks ago, like <laughs> it just goes to show you how much Vince McMahon hated that WCW oh my world God. that he would rather have a belt called the Universal Championship just so he didn't have to say you know say hey the world you know the world championship is coming back there you know what I mean but nine months ago he debuted in the Royal Rumble uh, he lost at WrestleMania which kind of pissed everybody off but uh they kind of redeemed it at SummerSlam, where he beat john cena clean uh and now he is the champion now when is like the last time this happened where somebody came in from tna ring of honor new japan and within that time period became the top champion uh the cream of the crop uh it's it just reminds me of going back in time to almost like that flair time where flair jumped from wcw uh, was in there for a little bit, you know, won the championship, and uh, that seemed kind of quick for an outsider. Uh, I know there's been other <laughs> other happenings in between a uh, few decades there, but uh, what do you think? Wow. I mean, if you could break that down as, you know, AJ Styles as champion, what does this really mean now? Because this is, it's it's really deep if you think about it. That means if Vince is a believer, that's what the hell that means. <laughs> I mean, again, I mean, a guy who made his name outside of WWE – Becoming the top champion of the company, arguably, in that amount of time, it's mind-boggling. I mean, uh, granted, we've seen guys like Chris Jericho, who's made, who made his name in WCW, uh, Eddie Guerrero. They've become top champions in WWE, but nowhere near that time frame. I mean, they had to put in years before uh, they were even in consideration. I mean... That And that was a time where you really had to pay your dues and erase that WCW stigma off. The only person that I could really think of maybe, and again, he didn't win a WWE title. He won that cheesy World Heavyweight title, was Goldberg. Mm -hmm. 
But I mean, that was probably, and he was only there for a year. So I mean, that's maybe about as close as we are going to call. And it's not like he got a run. So it remains to be seen. I mean, AJ turned up the heat to get here. Is he going to keep the heat on to stay there? The cruiserweight classic uh, cooter has finished. It's over with. It's been a it's been a long few weeks, but uh, we have a CWC winner, but more importantly, a new cruiserweight champion, TJ Perkins. Uh, did you get to watch the whole series every week? Let me explain something to you. I bought a Hulu account just so I did not have to sit through three hours of Raw. <laughs> All right, I get it the next day. It's 90 minutes. You cut out all the bullshit entrances. You get to watch SmackDown pretty much unedited because that's a shorter show. And I, I'll be honest, I didn't watch every week. But the Cruiserweight Classic, I watched every episode, 9 o'clock, religiously. Mm-hmm. This has been the most fun I've had as a wrestling fan since, oh, my God, like, pff, WrestleMania 18. Yeah. You know, I mean, I just the stuff that these guys did, the heart – that they put in all these matches. And every round, there was a match that you just could not help but talk about. And, I'll, and I would go to work and talk to, about these matches to these people who have no idea what the hell I'm talking about because they hate wrestling. And I'm just like, dude, you would seriously, if you watch this. And I would send them clips, and they're like, oh, my God. Like, I, I you know what? WWE owes me some royalties for all the promoting that I did for the CWC. So I'm just saying, like, I know of at least three people based on my recommendation that I bought the network just to watch that <laughs> after me showing them clips. But yeah, dude, there's, there was 32 guys to start and so many guys that I just want to see again. And I'm glad that they're going to raw. I just hope it doesn't get watered down, you know, Vince McMahon style. Yeah. I, I, I want to see, you know, the essence, like we used to see in nitro in those days, like the, the Malenko's, you know, the, all the lucha guys, your Ultimo Dragon is the Japanese. It's just a mix of everything, and it's like it brought me back to the '90s, and I loved it. And it was it was just incredible. A huge week that was a lot of things to talk about, but that's because there's so many things happening uh, each and every week. Another wrestling podcast dot com. Check it out, like it, follow it, subscribe to it, and all that fun stuff. Uh, but. You know, Jonathan, like we said, he's not here this week. Uh, he's in parts unknown. We don't know when he'll be back. But he did send this interview in with him and Jamie Dundee. It's quite the interview. Let's uh, check it out right now. Joining us today is a man who is never at a loss for words, a bona fide <laughs> legend in the professional wrestling business. He's a second-generation wrestler, a multi-time champion. He's wrestled in pretty much every state for every promotion and is one of the reasons I started watching wrestling. Uh, Joining us in the AWP studio today, the man, the myth, the legend, Jamie Dundee. (laughs) Well, Jonathan, that was a hell of a build-up, and thank you. I am some of them things, but uh, I'm a legend in my own mind, I guess. and, And look, I just saw a picture you sent me. Is that you? I have that actual picture here in my home. I have a big, huge bucket full of pictures and shit, and I actually just saw it not too long ago, man. That's pretty funny. Which one are you, the black-headed little fellow or the red-headed little fellow? The red-headed guy, yeah. Uh, Bless your heart. From that moment on, you were cursed. (laughs) (laughs) That's right. Now, that was in um, Tell City, Indiana. Wow, man. That's hilarious, man. Yeah. That's just great. That's my... uh... I have a copy of that picture. Don't ask me how, but maybe it's a, maybe somebody gave it. The little blackheaded fella. Who was that? That's my brother. Okay, so maybe your brother, because I remember y'all. I remember him for damn sure. I, yeah. I, 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 I vaguely remember the little redheaded fella, but but I remember him. Actually, I have a, a bunch of different pictures I have because, you know, like back in our day, we were in the same building in the same town every single day. Like every Wednesday, every Monday was Memphis, every Tuesday Louisville, every Wednesday Evansville, and every Saturday in Nashville, and then Thursday and Friday would be some town in between all of them. And so, I mean, you get to know the people like you know your family. You know what I'm saying? You spend more time with them than you do your family and so everybody in them days used to develop pictures and ask you to sign them and i would say yeah i'll sign them but you have to make double copies and give me a picture a copy of all the pictures that you know you've taken throughout the night or whatever of me so every week on like one wednesday they take a picture the next wednesday they would give me the ones they took the week before and i would bring them home and because there's no doubt about it jamie dundee loves one thing on the planet more than anything and that is jamie dundee (laughs) (laughs) that's awesome um now i i have to say when when I was going to this, I was going every Tuesday to Louisville. 
Um, I was going to the Evansville shows, and wow. at that time, you guys were the hottest thing going. It- yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not wrong there. I, I told Wolfie when we first started this gimmick, we actually, uh, Wolfie started the gimmick like a couple months before me and we were wrestling in this outlaw promotions. We were doing a Thursday night in Shelbyville, Tennessee. We were doing Friday nights in uh, Central City, Kentucky, Saturday nights in Beaver Dam, Kentucky, and Sunday nights in Bowling Green. And we were wrestling against each other. It was Sir Wolfie D versus Jamie Dundee or J.C. Ice. And, and Chris Champion said, hey, man, you guys ought to do that gimmick together. Because, you know, both of your gimmicks are kind of the same, J.C. Ice being the white rapper, you know, vanilla ice type of dude. And he said, y'all ought to do that together. So then we put the shorts on and we got together. But I told, I used to tell Wolfie, I want to be the Rock and Roll Express of the 90s. You know what I'm saying? They were the shit in the 80s. And I said, I want us to be the Rock and Roll Express of the 90s. And needless to say, I believe we, we did that. We, I mean, like you just said, we, we, we were, it was us and Brian Christopher, man. That was it. Feed the, build the company around us and Brian Christopher. And that's what we did. And it worked. Absolutely, and that's it's amazing to see that you guys really had your finger on the like the pulse of of that time. Like it was uh, the kind of the underground rap thing was just starting, and you guys, I remember the theme song. Anytime it comes on now, like the na 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 na, na like yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's just stuff you don't forget. And uh, you guys were just like it was it was different, and it definitely stood out. And I mean, I remember being in the Louisville Gardens. Now, where I lived in Indiana, it was an hour. You you lost an hour going down there, and then you gained it right. up. So I would go on school nights and come down just to see you guys. And uh, I I tell the story. A lot of people they don't really believe it, but now I'm gonna have you confirm it, even if you don't remember it. But um, okay. Uh, after the shows in Louisville, you guys used to go to a Waffle House. Very much so, and always. It, cause- that yeah. was the place to eat. You could eat there for five bucks, and we only made fifty or a hundred, so <laughs> so you had to eat cheap, man. So the the time that I remember the most, it was actually around the time of my birthday, and they had Lance Russell say like "Happy Birthday." He would say it for everybody, you know, the week or whatever. And right. um, the one of my mom's friends was, you know, I say dating, but uh, with was with Brian Christopher at the time, and right. it was you, you, Brian Christopher. Dangerous Doug Gilbert, and I want to say that Wolfie might have been there, but also people that came in that I had no clue was the gentleman who was uh, Spellbinder. Yeah, that's Harry Del Rio is his real name, but Spellbinder, yep. Well, see, you know what? Here's one thing. There's no way you could make this up and be lying because me, Spellbinder, Doug Gilbert, and Brian Christopher all lived in Memphis, so we all rode together. Yeah. So there's no way you would know that if it wasn't true because that's exactly right. Wolfie Rowe with fucking Randy Hales trying to, you know, stay in there with the office part and stay in there and keep our name, you know what I'm saying? It, yep. If you got one guy in the office, you can keep a job. Yep. <laughs> so Wolfie would ride with Randy because they lived in Nashville, so they would ride together. And then me and Wolf, me and uh, Brian Christopher and Spellbinder would leave Memphis, and we would pick Doug Gilbert up, who lives at the 108, which is halfway between Nashville and Memphis. We would stop and pick Doug up, and then Doug, we would all ride into Louisville together then we stay over in louisville and then shoot down to evansville wrestle evansville then we shoot back to memphis so that's exactly right and there's no way you can make that up because <laughs> you wouldn't have known to say them four men because you didn't know we rode together that's, so that's exactly right and that's a true story people i, I don't keep up with wrestling i fucking hate wrestling i love me but i, I don't blame the wrestling business but i uh i damn sure don't I don't condone it. My children don't watch it. They're not allowed to see it, be around it. I think it's fucking garbage. I think anybody that ever gets in it ends up fucking either dying in a hotel alone or they're a drug addict and they're broke. And and, and that goes back to all the big star. Ric Flair's fucking broke today. Lex Luger's fucking broke living in some fucking uh, preacher's. I don't know if you can cuss on this podcast, uh, but I fucking can. cuss, so I'm sorry. No, no, <laughs> but, you're, you're but, uh, and, 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 and so, I mean, it, it's the fucking devil's business. It, it's no good. There's not but a few wrestlers I can fucking even think of that that in the end still have their money you know what i'm saying because you it's a it's a cash business it's like a prostitution business and fucking the promoter is the pimp and you are the fucking whore and, and and you do it but there's no insurance there's no benefits there's nothing in the long run and 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 then like what Mr. man does today is just a fucking atrocious and a joke because what he does is he's he 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 takes people and he builds them up and it's hard as fuck to go from wrestlemania to working at walmart man yeah but after five years he discards you and five years later you're fucking 
find out that, that the wrestling world ain't what it's supposed to be, and 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 these boys end up fucking dying in hotels and OD, and, and because it's it's awful hard to take that fall from fucking fame, man. And when you take that fall from fame, only a few people could ever get over that, me included. It took me years and many, many, many years to finally realize that fuck that business, you know, it's uh, it's over for me. I'm done in it, and I don't ever want to be around it or associated with it again. But also, they don't want me around it or associated because I am a real fucking wrestler, and I'm not going to let them tell me to do something like a monkey on a string. I am going to do what I know is correct and right in my business. But Vince McMahon is not in the wrestling business for wrestling anymore. He's in the wrestling business to make a doll of some fucker, to put him on a video game, make a T-shirt, and sell his merchandise and keep the money. And, you know, and that's what it boils down to. But five years later, when he discards that whole crew and makes another crew, them poor men that he's discarded, they, they, it's hard, especially at 25, 27, 28 years old, to fucking take that fall from grace, and you think your whole entire life's over, because, believe me, it's great when you walk down the street and people touch you and tell you how fucking great you are and, and, and buy, a, buy your pictures every week. It's wonderful, but when it ends, it's awful fucking hard to, to re come back to reality, man. It really is, and that's why wrestlers end up like you hear. They OD, they fucking die, they go to jail, they do robberies, they fucking, because, you know, it's, they don't know what to do, and it's a sad, sad fucking business man but you know yeah but i think that's all all business that's rock and roll that's movie stars that's anybody you know what i'm saying and when you make that fall from grace brother it's awful fucking hard to wake up man and say fuck i gotta go in here and do this nine to five when you was on wrestlemania six weeks ago you know yeah. and uh like nowadays obviously like you said that it's it's changed and it's not oh, really it's not wrestling anymore like the what i what i grew up with um but even with all that stuff that happened to you, um, if you knew now what you know, um, would you still would you still done what you did? Yes, yes, very much so. You could never, uh, you, fuck yeah, fuck yeah, because brother, it, it was great. It was fucking one of the greatest moments of my life, being on being on top of the world and being being J C Ice the star. But but the but the bad thing is. It took me many, many years. I'm seven years clean now off of fucking cocaine and heavy drugs. I smoke my weed every single day. I don't drink no more because when I drink, it makes me want to go do cocaine and I become J.C. Ice. J.C. Ice is another alter ego of mine, and I don't care what nobody says. In the rest of the business, you have two egos. You have the normal person, like who in my life is Jamie Dundee, and then you have your wrestling ego. And, and, and they come out when people when the first person touches you and tells you how great you are in the bar, then J.C. Ice comes out, and you become J.C. Ice. But J.C. Ice is a no good dude man he's all about his fucking self and you know he's not allowed in my dad's house my mother's house you know what i'm saying because but i understand that and i know that but it, it it's something that is instilled in you with the ego thing because you think you are greater than the fucking than the than the gimmick than the wrestling business you think and it's not it's not the wrestler itself's fault it's just how you become because you become this star and the people tell you that off so much that you start to believe it yourself, man. And you cannot fucking stipulate the difference in reality and fucking the wrestling business. You know what I'm saying? And, but today they'll damn sure let you know because they'll throw you in jail now and they'll fucking arrest you. And <laughs> in our day, man, the cops literally would fucking drive us home or follow us home because yeah. they were wrestling fans too. And they watched us every Saturday morning. They used to say, if you're going to rob a house in the South, don't do it on Saturday morning because everybody's home watching wrestling. Yep. And, 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 you know, com compared to, to then and now, our wrestling was the same, but it wasn't. Now it is script-written, and you can fucking tell. You can tell them two people have fucking practiced that and script-written, and they're doing – in our day, they gave you pointers. They said, Dundee, PG-13, y'all are wrestling the Rock and Roll Express, and in 15 minutes, we need you to go to the house, meaning we want it over. Mm -hmm. And that's all they told you. And then in, during that fucking 15-minute match, we did what we did as PG-13, and they did what they did as the Rock and Roll Express, and it worked. The wrestlers today, they don't listen to the crowd. They, the people are fucking sitting there in silence. They, they, you know, they edit all that noise in. You know what I'm saying? If you go to a live WWF show, the people are fucking quiet. Yep. You know, we had to go to the same building on the same night every fucking week and try to draw a crowd. Let Vince McMahon try that. Let Vince McMahon come to Memphis on Monday, Louisville on Tuesday, and Evansville on Wednesday, and Nashville on Saturday with this fucking crew, even with the crew he's got today, every fucking week and see if he can draw. Because it's easy to come to town once every fucking year. You know what I'm saying? It's like the circus. The circus comes to town once a year and everybody goes. But if the circus came every week, they wouldn't fucking go. And just, you know, so it's awful hard to fucking do what we did. And it even goes back to my dad and Lawler days in the 70s and the 80s. It's awful fucking hard, man, to go to the same building with the same people every week and try to make him convince them to buy a ticket next week 
because what we got is good enough to see. They couldn't do it. The Vince McMahon couldn't do it. John Cena couldn't fucking do it. The Rock couldn't do it. You can bring them to town one time, and they'll sell that fucking building out. But you bring them back the very next Monday night, and it'll drop people. And in one month, I guarantee you, that building will be damn near fucking empty. No way possible can they do what we did. Now, um, we we I I watched it, and uh, you were a big part of the Wrestling Road Diaries too, um, with Colt Cabana and Luke. Gallows. Oh yeah, yeah, now, yeah, yeah, yeah. For was that? How did that feel for you as somebody in the business? For I mean, you're still relatively young, uh, obviously, and these are young guys as well that that look up to you and that realize the mark you made on this business. How how did that feel coming away from that? Well, I, I always said I used to. I used to. I mean, uh, literally, I used to cry sometimes, and I would think to myself, "I wonder if anybody really gave a fuck." You know what I'm saying? Because we put our blood, sweat, and tears, man. You know what I'm saying? And our bodies went through so much pain, and there was no doctors. There's no fucking doctors in the dressing rooms like the WWF has, and the boxers have, and the MMA fighters have. There's none of that bullshit, man. It was go out and get a fucking eight ball of cocaine, snort it, drink fucking a fifth of Jack Daniels, and come to the show tomorrow. Because the wrestling promoter don't care, and it's your job. If you break your fucking arm or break your leg, well, then by God, you're fired. So if anything hurts or anything's bad, then you just cover it up with drugs and alcohol alcohol and move on because if not you're not going to get paid because that, that's what that's just how, kind of how it was back then you know what i'm saying and and, and it, it, it means a lot to me i tell people all the time when people will both say something to me on facebook like mr dundee i remember one time or just like you're saying to me you know i remember when you came to my birthday party it meant so that right there means the fucking world to me bro you'll never know how much that means because you you put your body out there, and I used to always think, I wonder, when it was over and I was sitting in prison for fucking child support and just goddamn garbage or whatever, and I used to think to myself, I wonder if anybody really gave a fuck anyway. And it just makes me feel so good and makes me care to, to know that people cared, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, wow, they really did fucking care, and so it was worth it to me tenfold, and I would do it all over again. I may... I may have kept my mouth shut a few times, but I doubt it because that's something I can't fucking do. Like you started the show and said, the man is never lost for words. <laughs> and that's, it's, that's, it's not something you can learn. It's something that's either in you or it's not. And uh, I, I you know uh, when I was in the WWF and told Vince McMahon to go fuck himself, he was a fucking fuck him and fuck Jerry Lawler. But I may not have said that. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure I would have because that's who I am. That's the person that I am. Out here in the fucking street worlds when I was buying drugs and running them roads and all that, motherfuckers used to say, Dundee, real knows real. And you real as a motherfucker, man. Matter of fact, you might be too real because I'm the type of guy that I will say what most people are just thinking. You know what I'm saying? If a motherfucker walks by and they're thinking to themselves, God, that motherfucker looks like shit, I'll say, hey, man, you look like shit. <laughs> you you yeah. know, and it's, maybe it's not my place to say that, but but that's who I am, and I can't fucking take that. I can't. It's not something that I was taught. It's something that's in me, and I can't fucking take it back, and, and so be it. You know what I'm saying? There's there's only a few things in this whole world that I've done or said that I'd like to take back. I'd like to take back on a video call on The Rock and Nigger. Yeah. And, and 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 what I said was not wrong, because he's black. Yep. But the reason I said it was wrong, the reason I said it was because I was drunk, I was fucked up, I was drugged out, my career was over, and his wasn't, and I was jealous, and that's why I said it. Now it'd be different if he'd fucking done something to me or robbed me or fucking, you know what I'm saying? Yep. Because don't get me wrong, this whole fucking world is still racist. I don't give a fuck what nobody says. You know what I'm saying? I was born in Sydney, Australia. We don't even have black people in our country. They're called Aborigines. They still live in the fucking jungle, and they still climb fucking trees. But that's not me to make the fucking decision. I understand. But also, no black people in this fucking world hang out in my fucking compound where I live. No, and I don't go there. I don't like fucking rap music. It was a gimmick. It was something that I did for the fucking times. I am a redneck. I ride a fucking Harley Davidson. I chew tobacco. I smoke fucking weed. And I listen to fucking Hank Williams Jr. No black people do. So we have nothing in common unless they're selling me drugs. You know what I'm saying? I'm not a fucking racist. My family was never fucking raised racist. But I know them words hurt, and that's what I did for a living. I told I did interviews, and so I made an interview that day, and I called the Rock a nigger. And I am sorry for it today. It still haunts me today because Rocky Johnson and my father are friends. Atta Johnson, his mother, and my mother were friends. But what I said, in a sense, was not uh, – I didn't lie. But if you want to know the definition of a nigger, it means trash. And I got white trash tattooed on my fucking arm, so I'm the nigger out of these two. Out of the rock and me, I'm the one that's the nigger. <laughs> yeah. But do you see what I'm saying? But I said it for the wrong reasons, and it fucking bothers me to this day. I've dreamed about it. I've woke up over it, and I've cried over it. 
and I don't owe him an apology, and he don't owe me. You know, he don't. It's one, not one of them things because you know, me and him took two different paths in lives. We grew up when we were little kids, all the way up to about ten or eleven years old, and they moved off to fucking Florida, and he became a football player, and I moved, and I went off with my dad and became JC Ice. So we took two different paths in lives, and we probably, you know, he probably don't give a fuck, or they may not have ever even known it, but it bothers me, and it bothers me because I'm real, and. I said it for the wrong reason, and and I'm sorry about it. And one day I'll have to face him because the world we live in, we always have to face our demons. And one day I'm going to tell him, I, I apologize, my friend, whether he cares or not or whether he knows or not. You know what I'm saying? But that's one of the very few things in my life that I've ever said or done that I'm fucking sorry for because the rest of it, I wouldn't have said it if it wasn't fucking true, and I wouldn't have said it if I was fucking ashamed of it. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. And so, I mean, that's just how I live my life. I teach my children, you know, if you believe in something and you believe in it enough, you go to hell with gasoline britches on motherfucking back of it. Yeah. Don't ever change your word because someone else tells you to, by God. All you got in this fucking world is what you say. You know what I'm saying? And, and you know, like I said, the, the rest of the business, it, it, it was a part of my life, and I loved every fucking minute of it, and I wouldn't change nothing. And I'm glad to know when I'm dead and gone off this planet that my children are going to be able to pull up on YouTube videos of me. Some of them I wish I could get taken down, <laughs> but I can't. <laughs> so fuck it. But they're going to get to watch me and see me 20 years after I'm gone, and, and I'm, I'm thankful for that part you know what i'm saying there's only one thing i never made in the rest of the business i wanted to make and that was a fucking video game and a doll those two things i always wanted to fucking have and i didn't have but so be it you know what i'm saying that's just the way a cookie crumbles but everything else i did and like you said me and wolfie for two little skinny white boys we went to every fucking major organization been on every fucking major organization's pay-per-views and we were good at what we did we were real fucking good when you uh when you started the wrestling business now you you know your father was a uh, a legend is putting it lightly. I'm, I'm telling oh, you, yeah. I, 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 saw, I saw the, I saw the emotion that everybody had with for him. And um, did you have any thing when you started that you said like, I, if I do this in the business, I'll, I'll be happy and I can quit. Like, if it was a championship or going to WWE yeah. or whatever, was yeah. there like well, one know. thing that you had? No, well, see, when I was a kid, there was no cable TV, okay, mm-hmm. first of all. So you didn't – I never even knew there was another wrestling organization that existed except for – back then it was called CWA, Continental Wrestling. Mm-hmm. It changed. It eventually changed the USA. But I didn't know there was another fucking wrestling company even out there. I never heard of Hulk Hogan my whole entire life when I was a kid. He came to Memphis, and they called him the Hulk. But as far as the first time I really realized there was another organization is when we started getting cable TV in the early fucking 80s, and TBS was pumped in. It was called Turner Broadcast. It was still out today. TBS was pumped in, and we could watch the NWA. And my brother-in-law, who was beautiful Bobby Eaton, Bobby and Donna, my sister, had moved to fucking Atlanta and was on TBS. And so then I could see Bobby on TBS, and that's more or less the first time I really realized, damn, there's another fucking wrestling organization. <laughs> then when my dad lost to Loser Leave Town to Lawler in 84 or something, we moved to Louisiana, and my dad was the booker for Mid-South Wrestling for Bill Watts. And I realized, fuck, there's another company. And then we went from Louisiana to Charlotte, North Carolina, and my dad was the booker there. And I'm like, well, fuck me, there's a bunch of wrestling companies. <laughs> because, you know, growing up, there was no cable TV, no internet, none of that shit. So the the business was really, really what we call kayfabe. You didn't know, you know what I'm saying? Like when I was a kid, masked wrestlers wore their fucking masks to the building from the building and you never knew them. You know what I'm saying? Even if fucking they came to my dad's house to visit my dad and I would say, who's that? He would say something like, that's the program seller. You know what I'm saying? He yeah. would never say that's fucking uh, Mr. Wrestling too, because that way he he you know he let me know that fucking the, the the guy didn't wear the mask everywhere he went. When I was a kid, I saw all wrestlers with masks. Just fucking that's what they lived in. Yeah. <laughs> they drove down the road with them because <laughs> in in them days, fucking when you were ten miles from fucking Memphis, you slipped your mask on and you drove the last ten miles to the fucking building with your mask on. You know what I'm saying? When my dad beat Jerry Lawler for his ring, and then he beat him for his house, my dad went to Memphis and moved in his fucking house for two weeks. So the people would fucking Memphis would say, fuck yeah, Dundee won Lawler's house. Fuck yeah, he did. I seen him cut in the yard. Yep. You see what I'm saying? Because that way we kept the realism in our fucking business. Uh, I tell everybody, our business was a mafia business. My mother hung out with wrestlers' wives. My father hung out with wrestlers, and I hung out with wrestlers' kids, and that was it. There was no fucking body else around. Nobody from my school was allowed to come and visit and play or hang out and stay the night. None of that shit. 
you know, in a sense, that's kind of fucked up. But then again, that's why our business fucking lasted 60 fucking years before it was exposed, and now it's damn near dead. And like I said, I don't care what people think. A wrestling business is fucking dead. The Vince man went to bed one night a billionaire, and he woke up 300 fucking million dollars short in a 24-hour span because, you know, he thought if he just gave everybody a fucking wrestling channel that they would fucking all, fuck, no, they ain't just the Internet world. Jonathan bought it, and then he fucking burned it on a disc and sent it to Jamie and fucking Wolfie and Doug and Brian, so us four didn't have to buy it. Yep. And then we put it on YouTube. And his idea was right, but his whole plan was wrong, and it was 20 years too late because why the fuck does anybody, he, you can get a pay-per-view included in your WWE monthly package for 10 fucking dollars. Well, he fucked himself out of 40 or 50 bucks per fucking household because if they fucking got the package, they get it for $10. You know what I'm saying? And that's why he lost $300 million. He went to bed a billionaire, and he woke up with $700 million. People think, oh, yeah, he's still got $700 million. If he does that two more times, he's fucking broke. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so I mean, his idea is right, but his fucking his his thing was wrong. He, he's too late, man. But uh, but back to your question. I'm sorry, I got the rambling. But back to your question. I'm so glad everybody fucking cared what I did. And when I was a little kid, I said I wanted to be in a magazine. I wanted to be on television. And then when I found out there was other wrestling organizations, I wanted to walk the aisle of the Madison Square Gardens and be on WrestleMania. And I did every one of them. So I accomplished my checklist, my, my, my to-do list, as they call it. I, I, I did every one of them. And then as the world progressed, I wanted a video game, and I wanted a doll, and I wanted every fucking thing else I could get. But when I was a little boy, I said, when I grew up and be a wrestler, I want to fucking be on TV. I want to be in a magazine. I want to walk the aisle of Madison Square Gardens, and I want to be on WrestleMania. And I mean, hell, even to, to, to my credit, my dad never been on more WrestleMania. My brother-in-law, Bobby, he never made a WrestleMania, but I did. Little 165-pound JCI did, so obviously my talent was more than I knew it was. Well, and you know what? Like, I, I definitely think that that wrestling, like you're saying, wrestling now is definitely more on the inter- entertainment side. Um but it makes me wonder if you, I mean, you've, you've got to be familiar with some of these people and stuff. Do you think there's any wrestlers today that could have survived in the time that you, you guys were king? Sure. John Cena, because John Cena did it. He went to OVW in Louisville and he paid his dues and he worked his way through. And Sure, John Cena. <laughs> and, 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 who, and see, that's not fair for me, for, me to, for me to answer this question in a sense because – it's not fair for me to say, well, I don't think so-and-so and so-and-so would have made it because they weren't put in that predicament. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It, it's not fair to say that because they, they, they weren't put in – see, like I said, it, when I grew up and then when I got into wrestling business, when you went through your wrestling school, them old-timer wrestlers tried to make you quit. They tried to fucking hurt you and make you quit. It's just like that Tough Enough show. I loved it because Al Snow and them fucking guys, they put it on them. So nobody would leave there saying, fuck wrestling is fake. They'd leave there saying, holy fuck, that's way harder than I thought it would be. It's like anything. My dad has said it his whole life. I've said, when you watch Michael Jordan play basketball, he makes that look easy. Well, he makes it look easy to jump from the free throw line and fly through the fucking air and slam dunk. But try that shit. Yeah. If you watch two real good wrestlers, they make it look so fucking easy that anybody can do it. But try it. 90% of the people can't climb through the fucking ropes right. They don't know how. You know what I'm saying? But it's like anything. You sit at home and watch fuck I sit at home and watch MMA and I knock fucking Tito Ortiz and Chucky, you know, I thought, oh god damn it, Chucky, you should have known. Yeah, but that's real easy sitting on the couch smoking a fucking joint. Yeah. But being that's being that fucking octagon and see how it turns out for you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so it's not fair for me to sit here and answer that question and say, Well, I don't think so and so and so and so would have made it because you never underestimate a motherfucker got nothing to lose. Yeah. And so if you're on the fucking road and you make 40 bucks a night, me and Wolfie made it when we first started, made $40 each a night. It cost $30 for a hotel, so that was $15 a piece. So we had $25 left to put gas in our car, eat on, and go to the next show. Mm-hmm. Thank God for people like you and your brother. And there's a few more. There's a guy named uh, Pothead John who runs around Evansville. He was when he was little. We would count on being able to sell you a picture. You yep. know what I'm saying? We yep. would even sometimes we would even say when we go to Evansville, I sure hope Pothead John and his buddies there because we know that's ten fucking dollars. Yep. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? And if they weren't there, it was like fuck. Why ain't they here? They got grounded at home because they didn't do something in school or something. I'm thinking, boy, their mom and dad don't know that they they're safe. If without them, I'd fucking starve to death. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And such as you and your brother, like you said, you come to Louisville. You, without 
that without knowing you, without y'all being there to buy our pictures, we would have never been able to fucking carry on and keep doing it. So it's not fair to say because the people in the WWF, they get jet airlines everywhere and they fly in planes everywhere. And, you know, and they don't, they don't get none of their gimmick money, but they get a certain amount of money each fucking night and a salary and it's enough to live on. So it's not really fair to say would they have made it or would they not because they weren't put in that fucking predicament because you know you hear about a kid you know the car falls down on top of their daddy and a fucking eight-year-old kid picks it up that's because the adrenaline's flowing and it's a spur of the moment and it's something that they feel you know it's so it's they have to do it or their fucking parents dead you see what i'm saying and it's the same thing we have to fucking hit this road and make our fucking picture money to survive to get to the next show and then as you start to get over in wrestling, the more pictures you make, then you start buying T-shirts, then you buy hats and blah, 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 and then you fucking, then you get an ego and you think you're better than the people and you fucking forget where you came from. Yeah. And that's what happens to a lot of these motherfuckers. They forget where they came from, man. And then 90% of them, Lex Luger, I can name a shitload of them, end up broke and fucking homeless. And they got nothing and nobody. I still to this day have wrestling fans that I can pick the fucking phone up right now and call. And I call them wrestling fans, but they're my friends. And I love them. And without them, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be alive today. Man, but I can call them right now and they will drive and fucking pick me up anywhere, bring me home, feed me, give me a nice, comfortable, warm place to stay and get me off the streets when I was doing my drugs and shit. You know what I'm saying? So you never know. You, you don't know who your friends and real people that love you are until you're down and out, man. And that's when you find out who the fuck really cares. Well, I'll, I'll tell you right now. Um, I feel like we just we just like scratched the surface. I I know you're busy, and uh, I would love to have you back on at some point if you are willing to come back on. Because, like you said, you're you're telling the truth, and um, I'll I'll never stop being a fan of yours because of that. Thank you, man. And Jonathan, I appreciate it, brother. Like I said, man, you know, uh, I didn't mean to be fucking 20 minutes late, but my brain, all the years of drugs and fucking, and I tell everybody, wrestling wasn't fake, it was fixed. Yeah. They told us who's going to win or lose, and the rest of that fucking shit hurt, and I've had my fucking head bashed in a hundred times. I've got more concussions that, I, you know, but, but I mean, that, fuck it. I chose to do it, and I love it, and I wouldn't have traded it for nothing, and I thank you and people like you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you very much, and I love all of you, because without you, there's no me anyway, man. Today's show is brought to you by... This is your Olympic hero, Kurt Angle. And you're listening to another wrestling podcast in association with Celeb VM. Order a personal video message from me and many other wrestlers and celebrities now. Oh, it's true. It's damn true. Get a personal video message for yourself or as a gift for someone else. For personal connections, shout-outs, birthdays, proposals, weddings, and much more. Enter your details about yourself so the celebrity can record a personal video message, especially for you, including details such as your name, age, birthday, hobbies, or whatever else you include. As soon as the video has been recorded, you'll get an email with your link so you can share it on social media or download and keep it. Celebrities record videos as and when they can, usually within two weeks. But if you want a video for a specific date and it does not look like it will arrive in time, you can cancel it and get an instant refund at the click of a button. There are hundreds of celebrities to choose from and many more joining every day. Search by category or genre. Buy a gift voucher, get updates and offers, and encourage your favorite celebrities to join so they can connect with fans in a fun and unique way. Raise money for their charities and much more. So order your video now for yourself or for someone else. All right. Uh, Great interview. Jamie Dundee. Uh, Jonathan reporting, like I said, from Parts Unknown. We'll uh, hope to hear from him sometime soon or whenever he gets back. But uh, in the meantime, I got Mr. Anthony Cooter on the line. Uh, We're doing another wrestling podcast. Uh, You know, for 124 episodes... We've had a lot of topics on there, Cooter. Uh, a lot of you know evergreen topics, things you can listen to our show. That's the one gem about another wrestling podcast. That no matter what episode you listen to, there's a, a new topic on that show to where you can really just listen to anytime. Uh, one of the big topics we really haven't gotten into is about all the haterade out there. Uh, we're on episode 125, so now you know what what better topic to talk about than the marks out there and all the hate that they <laughs> spew on the internet. I mean, it's supposed to be about something you love, but it's it's 
it's just nonstop complaining, <laughs> bitching, and you know what I mean? Let like, me ask you this. Did you pick this topic prior <laughs> to inviting me on here? Were you trying to get me going? I figured I, I thought it would be a good topic uh, for the angry uh, – well, the, the angry one. I mean, there's, yes. there's been some anger out there, so uh, – Oh, yes. <laughs> Oh, God. See, I'm a hater, Credo. I I am absolutely a hater. But I I come from the school of of Star, from Star and Buckwild. I'm an objective hater. Uh, You know, I don't agree with what everybody has to say. And and, and that's the fun of being a wrestling fan. That's why I like talking to to, to you and and talking to Mike and and guys who I know enjoy wrestling for what it is and, and not complain about it. If there's something we don't like, you know, we discuss it. And we talk about it, and I don't hate on you for for liking Bret Hart, even though he's you know a jabroni, <laughs> you know. And you don't hate on me, you know, because I'm a Shawn Michaels fan, and you know we put Bret in a sharpshooter. We're past that, you know. It, it's just how do people find so much to complain about? I mean, you could give them. Everything they've ever wanted, and they'll still complain. It you know, was funny. I always think about it. I was like, I wonder it, what it would be like if the internet existed in like '88 or you know, in the '80s, just in general for wrestling. Like, how much, you know, like would Hogan be like Roman Reigns? Would there be that much hate out for Hogan? Like, you know, because back then it's like you, you have just either a telephone, not a cell phone, not a. Not a pager, really. A no. rotary phone. Yeah, you had a rotary. <laughs> so it's like you didn't really have that that stuff to complain. And it's like you just watched it and enjoyed it. And now there's just people that just they just want to just complain to complain. And it's like okay, you can compl- like it's just, especially with just social media. It's like out of hand. Uh, you know, it's okay. We get it. You don't like this guy or you don't like that guy. Like, of course we can disagree on things, but there's just people out there that just like. Are you? Do you? Why do you watch it? Because I don't think there's any one positive. I don't think there's a positive thing you've ever said about what we're watching right now. You know, like when we have the groups out there, the threads we always talk, or you know, people on blogs or anything. The even the show. You know, it's it's just a form of just talking about stuff that we love. But man, even I know our, we're on this. Uh, we're on TV tracks on YouTube, and it's just funny watching some of the the comments that people leave on a lot of the interviews that we do. Um, it's a, it's amazing. It's just like, what do you do all day? You know, you're, you're drinking that haterade. You you just wanna, you you're just doing this for what? Just to to spark to, to spark an argument? To spark what? Like, to, nobody can be civil anymore. Which is I'm trying to get. I don't know. It's a couple of things that drive me nuts about wrestling fans, and and it's it, it's a shame because we grew up on this and we're in our goddamn 30s you know we, we should be watching like matlock or some shit at our age and you know here we are still watching wrestling matlock. Wait, <laughs> I, yeah did i just really say that what the hell is wrong with me matlock. oh my god I mean, i'm not that old christ uh, all right a couple of things that annoy me spoilers why watch if why go on the internet to find out what's going to happen on a show if it, you, and, and and be so opinionated about it if you're I not going to watch it. I know. That's something that always drove me crazy. It's like, oh, did you hear so-and-so one? I'm like, well, yeah, it doesn't air till tonight. I didn't know that, but thanks for telling me, Dick. I know. Like, <laughs> like why would you do that? You know, not everybody is, is all about spoiling the fun and wants to know what's going on. That's why literally throughout the whole Cruiserweight Classic, I stayed off of the internet because of people – not respecting the fact that, not, you know what, not everybody is an internet troll. You know, I still <laughs> like to watch the shows. That's why I stay out of groups. And even now, you know, you think about, I'm just thinking about like these movies too, to where, you know, how, uh, let's, let's talk, side talk about something that's even not wrestling to where, okay. what if you went to go see Civil War, uh, Captain America Civil War this year, and, you know, uh, you didn't know Spider-Man was in it until you actually saw it in the movie. Like, now they have to put it in the preview. Like, it would, that would have been a really great surprise for any comic book fan in the movie. You know, to where that's what I feel like they're doing now with these spoilers. To where, 
you know, even on the Rumble, like, oh, did you know th- there's going to be a surprise in the Rumble? Oh, and then guess who's backstage? And it's like, yeah, <sighs> Booker T and Kevin Nash that one year. I mean, like, I knew that like a couple of hours before, and I'm like, you guys all suck. I know. <laughs> like, just, just, just shut your mouth and watch the damn show. Stay off of the sheets. Everybody you know, wants to be the first person. That's the thing. Like, oh my god, especially like, just watching my Facebook feed go up to all the sites that I follow <laughs> for news. It's just like, yeah. Every like I'm just I have to start on following people because it's like okay we get it you want to be the first person with this news or whatever and and that's the thing too a lot of them spoil it too because like if you don't want to watch it until you get home you can't because you go on Facebook or Twitter and that's the first thing you see is you know all over social media so it's like you got to avoid it it's amazing you know the keyboard warriors out there uh, oh that's the uh, one that really drives me crazy <laughs> is is the keyboard warriors because I mean there's a majority opinion. In a minority opinion. And this is why I stay out of groups because I like to have discussions. And if you don't agree with me, don't agree with me. That's fine because I might not agree with you. But if you don't agree with the majority, if you're a wrestling fan, and I think it's more of a rabid topic at times and even say politics, then you are just like the biggest piece of shit in the world (laughs) and you just get lambasted. This is why I stay off of Twitter. Like everybody knows I'm a jerk. But, like, if I was active on Twitter, like, I'd probably get arrested. <laughs> it's just like, um, you people drive me crazy. Stop, stop d- talking. And, and you know what, Credo? Not for nothing. You, you've put me in a few of those positions with, with some of these trolls. But, you know, that, that, that's neither here nor there. But, yeah, I mean, again, the social assassin to take care of the, <laughs> exactly. the job. Just, oh, yeah, Cooter. Take care of that jabroni for me, please. <laughs> Fire at him. Go ahead. Go ahead. Give but, me your best. Now, how? Now, here's a question to where it's like, how do you please everybody out there to where, you know, it's like even if you do a really awesome podcast like this one, even if you do a really awesome, you know, like championship reign of somebody, like get back into wrestling to where I mentioned earlier, look at all the champions now. You have AJ Styles, you have Kevin Owens. Why should you com- be complaining? Just sit back and enjoy it. You know what I mean? Like they finally stopped shoving Roman Reigns down your throat. You know, Cena isn't in the. You know, Cena isn't getting a championship anytime soon again. So just enjoy this ride as it happens. And man, just complain, complain, complain. Uh, you know, I, I think uh, for the most part they're doing a good job. You're not going to please everybody, but you're doing a good job in terms of trying to give people something to watch this is why we have the women's revolution this is why we're adding a cruiserweight division you know not everybody wants to see women's wrestling i get it you know what maybe it's just not your cup of tea you know maybe some people want to relive the wcw days so you know what let's have a network you can go relive the past let's have a cruiserweight division let's do this let's do that uh, something for everybody because you no one's going to love your entire show. I mean, there are absolute spots on Raw where I just want to sit there and and just fix myself a glass sandwich. Bon appetit, Cooter. You know what I'm saying? Like, for real. But for the most part, like, lately, there has to be something about what I'm watching that I enjoy. Otherwise, I just wouldn't watch it. So if you don't enjoy it, don't watch it. How do you make it positive again? And that's what I'm trying to wonder to where, how can we make it positive? How can you, how can you get the haters to stop hating? And I think the, the answer to that is just, they, they'll never stop. They're just trolls and you know, that's what they want to do. So maybe we can get rid of the hate and just keep talking about what we love. And, you know, I think you just got to stop answering the people that just nonstop hate on something. Uh, we got to give them the power of positivity. <laughs> that's it. But uh, maybe out there you've come across a lot of haters out there in wrestling. Uh, maybe we can get a hashtag going of like haters or, or haters going to hate or Slater's going to slate. Right. Uh, you know, uh, to where how could we how could we get all the haters to just you know to just leave and just go hate on something else and get rid of uh, stay away from what we love of, of pro wrestling so I don't know uh, but have you experienced a lot of haters out there let us know too tweet us Facebook us let us know uh, maybe we can bring some of these haters to attention and we'll send out the social assassins to to cut them down I guess maybe uh, to end end their hate on wrestling no 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 I'm not playing that game again I'm retired. <laughs> I'm retired, Credo. 
<laughs> hey, well, it, it, it could be anybody. It could be anybody under those uh, the masks of uh, the social assassins. It would be a great gimmick, man. Like that's their gimmick to the ring. Like they're just they cut on everybody from like the president of the United States to, to you know to anybody. That would that would have been great. Just to drop promos on people all over the world, but. Regardless, uh, Mr. Cooter, it's been a great uh, time. Uh, thanks for stopping by, filling the boots of uh, the legendary Jonathan Benjamin. Uh, but hey, we gotta keep those haters out, right? Fuck those haters, goddammit. <laughs> well, tune in next week for... <sighs> Another Wrestling Podcast. Another Wrestling Podcast.